Hi, good afternoon. I just... Uh, there are islands of ambiguity and there are places where it is not being used at all. Uh, so, and we also heard that one of the largest challenges in uh, the applications in the hospital is used by clinicians. Now, I have worked in, uh, with at least five different HIS systems and also with clinicians, I mean, in hospitals where all the clinicians use IT in a paperless environment and also in places where People are very, very challenged and they don't use at all. So it's a mixed bag. So just to, you know, introduce to you, you know, why do we need medical excellence? You know, at the end of the day, healthcare is about clinical care and about excellent clinical care. So obviously we have to try and use any technology to drive medical excellence because that's the only way we can drive business efficiency and business excellence. And I use the term business excellence because healthcare business is not just about efficient business. There are also a lot of intangible success criteria like patient delight, which is what is business excellence. So therefore, we need to get to that point. Now in this, uh, if you look at the patient life cycle, you'd find that right from admission to discharge, the non-clinical functions are being done very, are being handled very well by the available HIS systems. Be whatever HIS system you're using, the non-clinical functions are easier to track, the data easy to collect, easy to analyze. It may be that 60 to 70 percent of the data as it is in HIS, you know, as it captures today, about 70 percent of the data that it captures is non-clinical. Whereas when we are running hospitals, I think we should be capturing more clinical data as well if we have to drive clinical excellence. And that's only about 30%. You know, I mean, very little about treatment, about outcomes. And we really are really short on clinical governance in various hospitals in this country. You know, whichever system we look at, we uh, look at business very well. But when it comes to clinical governance, we are hesitant, we are very defensive. And if you look at the important aspects in clinical governance, clinical audits, we do random clinical audits. The criteria that most hospitals uses, uh, use are very different. We do not have standardization of the criteria that we will use across the country. We rarely measure clinical effectiveness objectively. We are still very subjective when it comes to measuring clinical effectiveness. Risk management proactively, we rarely do. And to do this, we need to have enough data. And all that data can only come if we have clinical applications recording clinical data from the patients. And of course, use of this information also to educate and train the people. You know, and to stop being defensive about clinical audits. Well, business excellence we require because we, I think we've heard because of accreditation. Now, one of the challenges of technology that we find is that with rapid advances in technology, the users who use this, they have a very short training time. The chances that, you know, so where we, there also the IT applications need to be developed to see that many of the analytical functions of their technology can be handled not by directly by people so that that short training time can be used before the technology advances to the next level. And of course, because we all run very, very tight ships, business efficiency is absolutely mandatory. And that I think all of us understand very well. Now, complexity of the requirements, we are, you know, all of us know. Even paper-based documentation, when we do, we, are, we do it very inadequately. None of the hospitals have a standardization of formats. We all, you know, each hospital decides for itself what it has to be done. So that's a huge challenge. You know, how much of, you know, doctor's notes should be computerized? I mean, look at the prescription that's written here. I mean, it's a, it's a nightmare for anyone who, you know, for the patient, for the pharmacist, for the doctor alone. I mean, I'm sure the doctor cannot read it again when he has to read it himself. So obviously, now, the challenge is, 
how will the doctor see the screen? You know, if you just keep on asking the doctor to click, 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 and you don't show him the screen as he's used to seeing it, you know, at the end of the thing, before he confirms, it should look like a prescription that he's used to seeing. It's easy. The number of clicks that he has to uh, do to, uh, to reach that confirmation. You know, the more the number of clicks, the doctors will lose their patient. That's what takes time. Whether for senior doctors, you need to have facilitators who will help them because the younger doctors are not so IT shy. The senior doctors, because they're very, very busy and they find it more difficult to scroll through the entire screen and you know, they don't have so much time for training. So it's, sometimes it's good to have a junior doctor or another assistant along with them who will help them guide this. And this works efficiently. Of course, we have, you know, I mean, I've been using IT in hospitals for the last 20 plus years. And we have non-interface interface legacy systems. Now, hospitals have them. Now, they do not know what to do. Now, they want to upgrade. They want to go further. But they have challenges. So we need to find out mechanisms whereby hospitals can perhaps collaborate with each other and find a common platform somehow or the other. And when we decide that, okay, you know, like uh, the previous speaker was mentioning about, do we have abundance of data? So it's not, you know, abundance of data. We have not organized our data properly. So therefore, to even have organized data and to see which, what use you will use it for is very, very important. So therefore, the care, regulate, the care providers, regulators, and the payers, they all need to use common platform to ensure that we have a harmonized healthcare ecosystem. And for this, we need an enterprise-wide IT solution. It must handle every aspect of patient care, right from the time of admission to his care at home to the connection with payers. We discussed in the morning, somebody was mentioning about discharges getting delayed. Now, as long as we do not have the uh, the payers providing online clearance at discharge, it is very difficult to do it in less than half an hour or one hour or two hours. You know, it necessarily takes seven, eight hours because it takes 10 faxes and 20 phone calls to get the clearance. And those are the challenges that we still have to find a way to solve. They are all, I mean, there are steps in that direction, but I would say they are just baby steps and they have a long way to go. and necessarily the complexity of all the operations because you have multiple levels of skilled workers in the hospitals. You have nurses at one end, doctors, engineers, administrators, finance guys, HR. Now all of them, they have different roles to play. But each of them will interface with the ICT backbone of the hospital. So to clearly define accesses, roles for each of the people, and who will access what at what time is extremely complicated. And that is why uh, we do not have unified solutions as yet. That's why we still depend on, you know, buying multiple systems and doing part of, you know, part of the functions uh, manually and part of the functions using ICT. So to drive clinical efficiency, obviously, you know, computerized phys physician order entries are absolutely mandatory. Because, you know, one of the biggest sources of error in medication is when the nurse transcribes what the doctor writes. And the next thing happens is when the pharmacist reads what the nurse has written. By the time the, you know, the medicine is actually given to the patient, there's already been three changes. You know, three different people have written and there are, there are errors. So the doctors must be the people who write the drug it must be directly read at the pharmacy and dispensed, and it has to be com completely computerized. You know, it may be okay to not have your daily progress notes all the time by the doctor, have somebody, some assistant write it, but I think medication is a serious business. And, uh, of course, all patient management uh, issues to be entered by the doctor. And for business efficiency, uh, we saw it earlier as well, all the workflow efficiencies and revenue cycle optimization. So at the end of the day, 
IT can only enable healthcare excellence, medical excellence, and business efficiency or excellence. It is not a substitute for anything. It is just whatever we were conventionally doing, it helps us do it faster. It helps us do it in a more, um, I would say, transparent, accountable, correct manner. So it introduces an error of, uh, it introduces an element of correctness, which on a manual operation is difficult, and also it reduces a lot of delay. So we can do things faster. And today it is very important because you know, the business is increasing so much, so it's necessary to go faster. So it is essential that we have dashboards that can drill down to the last step in any process. And that is the only way that we can you know, have a holistic view of what's happening in the hospital. So I just wanted to share this with you. Thank you very much.